Good afternoon, students. Today, I will present you the third lecture of the course dedicated to the physics of the quantum darts in the course of photonics. During the third lecture, I will talk about quasiparticles and crystal structure. During previous lectures, we were talking about one-dimensional energy bed approximation, but we, but we all know that we are living in a real world that is three-dimensional. What about crystal structures? In the solid-state physics, we have seven types of Bravais crystal structures that consisted of 14th syngenies. The most widespread syngenies in the solid-state physics are shown here. The first one is a simple cubic structure. The second is the body-centered cubic structure that differs from the first one only by this additional atom right in the center of the cube. <clears throat> the third one is face-centered cubic structure. It differs from the simple cubic structure by adding these atoms on the face of the cube. And the last one is the hexagonal, hexagonal crystal structure. Here you can see also the semiconductors which have the corresponding crystal structures. But uh, not only these structures are widespread in the semiconductor physics. The most widespread complex crystal structures are shown here. The first one is zinc blender or sphalerite structure. Zinc blender structure consists of two interpenetrating face cubic face centered cubic lattices of two different elements. So here we have for example one face centered cubic lattice of zinc and another face centered cubic lattice consisted only of sulfur atoms and they mix together by interpenetrating thus providing zinc blender structure. Interesting note that zinc blender is uh, named after the zinc sulfur because it was found found firstly even in crystals of zinc sulfur. That's why it's called zinc blender. The second structure is the diamond lattice. It is also the zinc blender structure but with only one element diamond, germanium, silicon. The next one is the road rock salt structure and I think it is uh, the most widely known structure because you know it is the structure of the sodium chloride that we use every day. Rock salt, rock salt structure is also the face centered cubic lattice with an additional atom at the very center of the cube. And also the virtue structure. It's a version of the hexagonal package that forms an isotope anisotropic displacement of atoms along one axis. Usually this is the C axis that is shown here in the vertical direction. This results in anisotropy of the main physical properties and namely optical properties. You can also see the examples of the semiconductors with their corresponding crystal structures. But when we say semiconductor, we also should bear in mind that there exists an insulator and a, and a conductor. And the main question is, what is the difference between all of them? The insulator has almost has full valence band. What is valence band? In the classical physics, valence band is the highest occupied band. So it's the case of the insulator. Also, insulator has empty conduction band and a forbidden band between a conduction band and the valence band has really big width. In insulator, its width is more than 4 electron volt or even 5 electron volt or 9 electron volt and so on. The conduction, the conduction band in classical physics is the lowest unoccupied band, so it is also the case of the insulator. What about a semiconductor? 
semiconductor has almost full valence band. What does it mean? It means that there are several holes in there also. Also, a semiconductor has almost empty conduction band. Almost empty means that there are several free electrons there. And the forbidden band, that is also called a band gap, has the value of about 4 and less electron volts. The, the main point here is the width of the forbidden band uh, is usually calculated at zero point temperature, so at zero kelvins. And for insulators, the band gap is usually has the value of uh, 5 electron volts at zero kelvins, and uh, the band gap of the semiconductors mm, has the value of about 3, 4 and less electron volts at zero point temperature. What about conductors? Conductors have no band gap at all, so it means that the valence band and the conduction band of the conductor intersects between each other and the conduction band of the conductor is almost full, providing a lot of free electrons there. So you can see here the three uh, different types of band structures of the materials. As you remember, uh, in the end of the previous lecture, I showed you the real band structure of the, of the different materials, and namely semiconductors. Let's return to them again. I remind you that when we are talking about electrons in uh, crystal structures, uh, we bear in mind that the electron has no rest mass of electron anymore. We, instead, we use the effective mass of the electron, which is a function of the energy, and it has to be calculated or experimentally obtained. Usually, effective mass of the, of the electron is obtained by semi-empirical methods. It means that we took some um, values from the physical experiment and then put them and, uh, uh, in mathematical calculation and how we obtain effective mass of the electron. Also, as you can see here in band, uh, in band structures, we have several branches here and here. And for every energy branch, effective mass of the electron is different. So it's a really complicated problem. Um, as we can see here, in the bottom of the band structure, we have a region of the valence band of the semiconductors. And here we have the region of the conduction band of the semiconductor. In the conduction band, we see that there is two or even three energy branches here. And uh, when we have such situation, then in semiconductor, the top of the valence band and uh, the bottom of the conduction band or conduction branch are situated at the same value of the wave number. These such semiconductors are called direct gap semiconductors. So a transition between conduction band and the valence band will be directly vertical. If uh, the minimum of the conduction band situated at one value of wave number and the maximum of the valence band is situated at another value of wave number, such semiconductors are called indirect semiconductors, and they are germanium and silicon. Also, I should mention that these energy branches are called valleys in the band structure of the real semiconductors. And in the end, uh, I should mention that uh, these band structures of these four of these six semiconductors show the most widespread and the most important semiconductors that are used nowadays in electronics.